We're currently on our way to the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. Lonely. I thought you just spilled like a bottle of water or something on me. My thigh is ice <gasps> cold. Please. The people in the room across from us are watching us. Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. Hi, hello, my name is Loie and this is part four in my Hollywood Roosevelt series. I am utterly freaking exhausted. It is 4.55 in the morning and Lynn and I just got back to our apartment. If you hear any kind of noises in the background, she's currently cooking pasta because we are hungry, hungry girls. <laughs> my bed is a mess. I literally threw up my makeup bag and like threw on some makeup. There's like a water bottle in my background. Like Pua is flipped over for no reason. I had to sit down and recap this so I could take off this makeup so that I could go the heck to sleep or at least try to because if I don't say all of this right now, I swear to you, I'm gonna start forgetting the details and I don't want to do that. I wanna say that almost immediately, like London and I felt stuff and London is someone who doesn't like experience paranormal very often, doesn't talk about it very often, doesn't dabble in it very often. She's spiritual and she's spiritually open but like she doesn't talk about it very often because she sees me talk about it, she sees me go through these hauntings. She's like experienced the real life effects of like being around someone who does talk about paranormal stuff and when she told me she wanted to have kind of like a ghost adventure because I'm going back to Georgia in a few days um, She was like let's have one last hurrah and have like a crazy ghost adventure and have like this big scary day and go ghost hunting and stuff I was so down and for some reason I felt this drive to go back to the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel Even though I said I wouldn't until I could do something to help the spirit that was trapped in the Marilyn Monroe suite And I just sort of felt like if I went and I didn't go back to that hotel and I didn't try to contact her, you know what I mean? Like, everything would be okay. There was a lot of like crazy stuff happening almost initially and I think like the moral of the story is that this place is super haunted. I don't think everyone experiences this kind of stuff, but I think there was a lot of energy there and I saw so much happen tonight that I cannot explain. There were so many things, like London's leg going cold and her feeling like someone was touching her and I would touch her leg and it was like, you could feel this icy handprint or like when we were all sitting together on that bed and I felt my thigh like ice cold, like someone was like wedged between her and I. There were flashes every couple of minutes. There were so many sounds, like that weird water noise. There was just so much that couldn't be explained. These heavy noises, or these heavy noises, these like heavy feelings, like, I mean, we, you guys saw, we tried to <laughs> dabble in liquid courage and like it just, nothing could help how terrifying this place truly became after a while. Also just realized my like stripes were totally wrong on this camera. I'm sorry, I literally just threw on shorts and a, freaking crop today because I am dead to the universe right now. But I think it's just so strange to me that the last two times I have gone ghost hunting, the real life person that winds up being involved in some way is so much scarier than any paranormal activity that ever could have happened. By the end of the night, um, you know, we went up to the ninth floor. We were, it was kind of like our first stop. You know what I mean? We're gonna go down to 213. We were gonna go to Maryland Suite. Like we were just gonna walk around and use that ghost app and see if anything happened. I don't have my boo buddy here, my like paranormal hunting bear or anything. I was just gonna see if anything in particular happened, if I could get any kind of like language coming through. The most insane experience in my life where I heard a spirit talk was in Marilyn sweet and it was never caught on camera because every time we could turn on the camera like it would just stop talking so I was really excited when it did seem like you know things were talking today and like we were kind of getting responses and words and stuff like that and like even though not all of it was caught on camera it definitely felt like there was like stuff around but then as the night went on we went to the ninth floor um, and kind of like started our like 3 a.m. <laughs> like you know what I mean like kind of ghost challenge. When that happened, you could feel the change in the air. There was this snarling noise down the hallway. There was something that shifted and then that fight broke out. And then London and I, I know you heard us say, oh my god, oh my god, we're trying to like rush downstairs. We see the security guard run by and he's like yelling, I need like assistance on the ninth floor. I need assistance on the ninth floor. We literally go down, we tell people like, hey, there's a fight that's broken out on the ninth floor. And like you guys, I literally thought it sounded so scary. Like it really, I've never heard a fight like that in my life. Um, but you could feel the anger. You could feel it like change and you could feel that shift and it was petrifying. Um, but after that, it just seemed like nothing was ever really the same. That, that like spirit, that kind of like playful spirit that it was like, 
things were moving it was like knocks when we kind of needed affirmation when we were talking like that giggling like kind of ghost when we were doing girly things like taking selfies in a mirror and thinking about how Marilyn would have done it you know what I mean if she had a cell phone nowadays or back then rather sorry again exhausted it felt like that was gone and once again just like the last time that I was there it was overpowered by something very 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 dark so by the end of the night I feel like I was very frazzled and I want to better explain what I think happened with the elevators and those two men at the very end of the video because that was what truly scared me to the point where I was like I called security I had someone escort me downstairs uh, me and London we had someone wait with us until we got into a car and we literally rushed into our home and locked the doors so we were in the lobby and we were told that we needed to go to bed obviously or just like get out of that area because they were cleaning so London and I kind of like grab our stuff and we are going back to the elevators to go back to our room we press to go up on the elevator we get in and I slide in my card everything's fine you have to like have a key card and stuff like that at this hotel um, very commonplace and I press three it lights up I see an up arrow and instead of going up the elevator goes down to lobby but the doors don't open and so I look at London and she looks at me I swipe again and I press three again to go up and it goes down again and I said that is so weird and so I swipe my card and I was like I wonder why I did that I press the lobby it went back up and then I press three again and it went back down and it was so 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 bizarre that at that point I didn't even know like what to say or like what to do I just like looked at London and she looked at me and there's kind of like three lobby layers if this makes any sense there's like a main area with like a pool and all of this kind of stuff and then there is like a lobby area with a front desk and all of that kind of stuff and then there is like a ground floor area where really the only thing that you do is kind of get picked up by cars or whatever it's just sort of like not as like nice as the other two so we get back on the elevator I'm kind of like this is so weird I swipe I press three and it starts going up and then stops on that like layer where it's like the pool and stuff so I swipe press three it starts going down I swipe I press three it goes down that was when both London and I were like nope we both jumped out of the elevator I was like pressing the open button so many times I was saying we gotta get out of here we gotta get out of here because it felt like something just wasn't letting us go to our rooms how do you explain that this entire time the elevator has been totally 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 fine and then all of a sudden I'm pressing go up it's giving me like this up symbol no one is pressing the elevator on these floors it is so late at night and the elevator is going down and going down and going down. When we get off, we encounter these two men. They're both British. We encounter the one man first. He's in the other elevator. I super briefly made eye contact with him as I passed. And I was saying to London, that was the scariest thing I've ever like seen in my entire life. That was so weird. Because like I just couldn't explain it. And like I just can't explain like the elevator saying it's going up and going down instead. Like confirming it is in fact going to three and it's going down and going down and going down and like will not let us out. Um, no one is calling the elevator. It just, the doors just won't open. So, um, this British man kind of like pops out to the side and he's like, what was scary, the ghosts? And I said, like, no, like, uh, just the elevator isn't working. Like, maybe don't use that one. So we're walking and this guy says to us, like, here, well, we can help you back to your room. Like, whatever in his British accent. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm, you know, we're good. We're okay. Thank you, though. And then the guy beside him kind of approaches us and, like, doesn't necessarily, like, reach towards us. He just kind of approaches us. And he's like, come on now. We can, like, help you back to your room. Everything will be totally fine. Like, we'll get you back upstairs. And we're both like, no, 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 we're good. Thanks. Have a nice night. And, like, left. But now I think about that. And the fact that he said the ghost. Like, anything scary could have happened. It's a Saturday night in Hollywood. But he said the ghost. And maybe it's because the place is haunted. Maybe I'm looking too much into it. But then part of me thinks that if they knew what room we were in, because they did know what room we were in, that maybe they already knew we were, like, out and about ghost hunting and stuff like that. And maybe they'd been watching us the entire night. So we spend the next, like, half hour looking for Sarah's. Can't find it. All sorts of weird stuff happening. Getting lost every three seconds. Finally, we give up. We go back to the elevator and I'm like we're not getting back in the right elevator where that happened we press up only the right one will open so I turn on the camera and of course that time it didn't go down and go down and go down so we finally get back up to our floor and um, as we are going back to our room we notice number one there's a security guard in the hallway thank god I don't know what would have happened otherwise like these guys were so weird in the end and um, the two guys the two British guys were standing outside of our hotel room and they said Oh my god you guys finally made it back and they kind of like smiled at us and we went into our room and like I just like looked at London and she looked at me 
and we looked like through the peephole and stuff through the door and the guys were just like hanging out out there just like talking to each other like staring at our door and stuff like that we dead bolted it whatever went on use our ghost hunting apps whatever 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 we get these kind of creepy messages and we keep hearing those guys out and about in the hallway just sort of like walking in walking out never really like doing anything finally at one point I hear it and I'm like I'm gonna go see like what's going on because I keep hearing them come in come out come in come out and they're not doing anything I go out and that's when I see this guy literally standing this far away from our door, staring at our door for no reason. When I come to the door, I kind of accidentally move the bathroom door off to the side and it sort of closes. When he hears that sound, he stops moving, looks over his shoulder, stares at our door like he's waiting for us to come out, and then finally opens his door and goes in. So I'm like, Oh my god so i go back and i'm trying to keep it cool i'm like all right time to pack up like i'm not trying to scare london um because at this point this isn't ghost this isn't paranormal it's like very 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 real and all the while this thing this thing on like the ghost apps is telling us to leave it told us to pack it doesn't want us here it wants us to go into that hallway it literally forced us to encounter these men what are the odds that we encountered these two men on that floor because the elevator wouldn't let us go upstairs and then they just so happen to be staying across the room from us. And then they just so happen in this entire massive hotel, this 12 floor hotel, they happen to be watching us the entire rest of the night or morning or whatever at this point. So, um, and I will get back into that in a minute. Uh, Lana kind of like goes over and sort of scopes it out. And that's when she realizes she sees exactly what I just saw because the men come back out, they stare at our door for about five seconds, like literally you guys, so close to our door go back in we're both like clamping our hands over our mouths like trying not to make a lot of sound when we walk like just trying to be really quiet and then that's when lennon's like we need to test this like we need to know like what happened and i know i, I briefly went over this but we have the deadbolt on so the door won't open all the way she opens the door and really quickly closes it and the minute that she closes it that man comes out of his room stares at our room looks around the entire hallway and then goes back into his room sorry i had to change out the battery and stuff for the camera um so we finally get downstairs, we get into our car, which is another story in itself. Our Uber driver was crazy and uh, drove like a maniac, literally didn't think we were gonna make it back here, but we did. And then when we got back here, I, we, it's all we can talk about. What are the odds? What are the odds that we get to this hotel all of that happens at the end of the night at literally like 3.30 in the freaking morning that we're gonna encounter these two men who are clearly drunk. They just so happen to be across the room from us after we just like, I, it was like something was wrong. Something was like really, 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 really wrong and we needed to leave. And we did and thank God for that. But then when we got back here and we're reliving all of this, and we're just like talking it through, we're talking through our experiences, you know, you guys saw the rest. Like the ghost part of it was super straightforward. You know what I mean? It was like, we saw things, we felt things. We I shared that with you real time, but the, the end of this, like the scary part is the real people. And I feel like this happens over and over and over again in my ghost investigation videos where this stuff happens with real life people that is 10 million percent scarier than anything that's paranormal and I feel like it's just a reminder that like the spiritual world just doesn't scare me that bad man but real life people do and those guys were so weird and when we got here I kind of like I took a minute I was sitting down to film this I was thinking about my thoughts thinking about my thoughts um collecting myself and I realized like there's another side to this that I didn't necessarily consider so I went to Lennon's bathroom and I said, think about this. And she's like scrubbing off her makeup and she's like, what? <laughs> and I said, what if the entire time it was that good female spirit we kept feeling over and over and over again? What if it wasn't letting us go upstairs? Because if we had just gone upstairs and gone to our rooms and been blissfully unaware of these two men, we would have tried to leave at like 4.30 in the morning and something bad might have happened. And when I said it, I don't know. Part of me feels like that's right, but then part of me also feels like there was so much negativity. Like right before we ended everything, we heard that creepy, creepy high through that spirit box. And oh my God, like Len and I both said, it didn't feel like a good high. It felt like a very like threatening high. Like, here you go. Here's what you really want. Hi, I'm talking to you. Like there was something wrong with it and there was just something wrong towards the end. And I hate that it had to end like this. And I hate that so many of my like paranormal investigation videos end off on such like a dark note, I guess. Like I'm excited for what I experienced. I am. I, I'm sad I didn't get to stay in Marilyn's room again, but that'll be another video with Haley in the future, of course. 
Um, and that is it for this little mini series. <laughs> I love you guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm going to rip these lashes off and I'm going to go to bed. I love you guys and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.